Welcome to this video which will show you how to disassemble your PHI model 0458 x-ray source brought to you by RBD Instruments. For tools you're going to need some open end wrenches 5 8 9 16 and 1 half inch, a small straight and cross blade screwdriver, some Bristol wrenches including 096-6, 048 4 and 168-6, a long needle nose pliers, a 964th and 316 inch allen, an OT80 screw or threaded rod, tweezers, aluminum foil, isopropanol, and gloves. The parts of the x-ray source include the water couplers, the cover, the filament feed through, the tube, and the end cap. We're going to remove the cover in order to gain access to the water lines. The water lines run from the couplers down to the anode. So we unscrew the screws that hold the coupler in place at the base and also at the top of the cover. These screws can be either straight bladed or Phillips. Okay, once we get the screws removed, we're going to snap the cover off, lift it up, remove the cover, and underneath the cover is the Teflon shield that we remove. The shield goes between the cover and the anode to help reduce arcing. Okay, now we can see the water lines. We can also see the high voltage line that runs from the high voltage coupler down to the anode. We're going to disconnect the 5 8 inch coupler rather than the 9 16 because that has a Teflon ferrule and is more likely to reseal. You want to be careful not to hit the ceramic with the wrench. So this takes a few turns to uh, loosen it up enough until you can use your fingers. You're going to unscrew the two water lines that connect to the source from the couplers. You're also going to disconnect the high voltage wire that runs from the high voltage feed through down to the anode. On some anodes, there's a resistor in between there. It's a 1K ohm 15 kV resistor. You loosen these other screws on the, the cover so that you can rotate it a little bit to pull the couplers off. And then you will have pulled off the cover. Now we're working on the section of the last little line that runs from the anode recirc back down to the, to the shroud. Not all x-ray sources have that second line. So we work off both ends of that connector, that water line, and then we can pull that off. And we pull that off. Sometimes it's a little tight. But once you get this last line off, now what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to drain the water out of the source into a sink or into a garbage pail. There's not, a, there's not a lot of water in there, but you want to get it out. Here we can see the cap head screws that hold the anode in place. On some anodes, those are Allen heads. On some, they're spline. Remove the screws by turning them counterclockwise. We'll now be able to remove the anode. Be very careful to slide the anode out. You may have to work it back and forth. Slide it out. And do not touch the vacuum end of the anode with your hands unless you have gloves on. Carefully work it out. Pass the end of the source. We don't want to damage the anode by scraping it. And then carefully set it down on the table. Okay, now we're going to remove the end cap from the x-ray source. For that, we're going to use the 096-6 Bristol. And if you don't have the Bristol wrench for this, you can probably get by with an Allen wrench that's close, as long as you're careful not to over-tighten it when you put it back together so you don't strip the screws. There are four screws on there. Remove the four screws. 
and then you're going to carefully slide the cap off. When you do that, you want to be careful because there are these filament retainer pins that are held in place by the cap. When you pull the cap off, those pins might fall out, or at least the one that's facing down. So uh, sometimes if you're not careful, the pin will fall out and roll on the floor, you might lose it. Okay, so we remove these screws, set them aside. If they're coated, you can wire brush them clean. All right, here we go. We'll slide the cap off carefully. All right, now we can see the filaments. See the filaments, these new style filaments are held in place with a little pin in the center. All right, the filaments are now exposed. Okay, next we're going to remove the filament access flange. This will give us access to the couplers where we can loosen the wires that hold the filament to the filament coupler. These are the 3 16 inch Allen head screws. Using the long needle nose pliers, you're going to hold the filament coupler while you unscrew the set screw by about one and a half to two turns using the 0448 Bristol wrench. The idea is that we want to loosen the set screws enough so that we can pull the filament wires out, but we don't want to remove the set screws completely. Okay, next we're going to pull out the filament retaining pins, which are holding the filament in place. We use the OT80 screw, screw it into the pin, pull the pin out. These pins are usually pretty loose. They come out without too much trouble. The pin goes through a hole in the ceramic, and then it goes into another hole in the molly shield, and that's what holds the filament in place. Then when the cap comes down, it holds the pin in place. Okay, once we remove the pins, we can slide both filaments out. Sometimes you have to work it back and forth a little bit. Now, if you're, if you're going to replace the filament, if it's not completely damaged, you want to be very careful when you take it out. Okay, now we can see the molly shield, and inside of the molly shield, the football ceramic. In this case, the football ceramic is very, very dirty and will need to be replaced. Okay, next we're going to remove the Molly Shield pins. These are the four pins that are up on the top. These are made out of copper beryllium. They generally come out without too much trouble. You will screw in your OT80 screw into the inside of the pin and then you'll have to use your needle nose pliers and very carefully work it back and forth and pull the pin out. Now you want to be careful. Sometimes you can stick a little something under the end of the needle nose pliers to act uh, to get a little bit more leverage. But just keep working it back and forth until you get all four pins out and then you remove the shield by working it back and forth. Sometimes it can be very, very tight to pull out. If that's the case, you can use some isopropanol as a lubricant. Just by working it left and right, left and right as you pull, and eventually you get it to come out. Okay, we set that down, and now we can get another look at our football ceramic. In this case, we can see some discolorations from arcing and some yellowing that happens from high voltage over time. We've used the same technique to remove the retaining pins for the football ceramic. Those are made out of stainless steel and they're a little bit harder to get out than the copper beryllium ones that hold the molly shield in place. Using the needle nose pliers, gently work the ceramic back and forth until you can pull it out. And you have to sometimes walk it, uh, you have to kind of step it along the side of the wall to get it out. It can be very, very tight. You don't want to break the ceramic. Okay, once we get this ceramic out, 
we can see that it's extremely dirty from arc marks and the yellowing that can occur from high voltage exposure so that will definitely need to be replaced okay the last thing we need to do is to remove the window from the end cap that's held in place with a little C retaining clip using a tweezers you pull one end of it to get it started and then you can pop the window out on some of the systems that use double pass CMAs there's also a collimator clip so there are actually two clips involved all right as we can see this window is not only dirty it has some holes in it so it will need to be replaced for sure well thanks for watching the video we hope you enjoyed it remember that all the parts you need for these x-ray sources are available from rbdinstruments.com that includes the filaments the window the football ceramics, the anodes. We also offer a recoding service for the anodes. You can visit our website at www.rbdinstruments.com.